When flying with a budget airline and travelling with limited funds, you've got no choice but to travel light. But perhaps a more appropriate title should be travelling in light. Delays on the outward journey there certainly were, but a comical chief steward kept everyone entertained until a slot for takeoff, making it a pleasant start to the holiday. And thank you to the hardworking staff at Ryanair for contributing to this. People going for business trips, people going for holidays, and people visiting family with Italians, Brits, and other nationalities, all contributing to a joyous atmosphere. Upon landing, someone said in Italian, Welcome to Italy. We want your money. How do you want to pay? Cash or card? And all the Italians laughed, knowing how true this statement is. Stepping out of the plane into warmth and sunlight with a whoosh of air on your face is, for me, one of the most joyous feelings, and I know that many would agree. And so onward we go to get the bag in the airport. Well, chaos is the only word that can describe what was waiting. No staff available to unload the baggage and a two hour wait in the baggage reclaim. No announcements, nobody knowing what was going on and nothing to do but smile and say, well, we're definitely in Italy. Piles of bags stacked up in the reclaim showed previous flights that evidently had had the same problem where people had given up waiting and continued with their journeys perhaps preferring not to miss connecting flights or avoid more delays by missing transport transfers and keeping friends and family waiting in arrivals. Finally, the bags arrived and everyone went on their way wishing bon voyage and tanti belli corsi to everyone. Personally, I've always encountered wonderful people when traveling and it was heartwarming to see everyone helping whenever they saw a need and passing on whatever information they knew in order to help and be of assistance. To the lovely lady with her young baby, I hope you have a wonderful time with your family. To the elderly couple lost and confused, hopefully you got to your destination safely. And to the wonderful family on holiday, even though there were great delays for you, I hope you had an awesome time. Everyone helping and paying it forward, just as it should be. Delays continued with no taxis, a strike, una sobra, and no trains available from the airport. The only form of transport for everyone in this major Italian airport was by bus. With so many people, there was a three hour wait for the one struggling ticket machine and then a huge line waiting for the Pullman to arrive. But even with the wait, the sun shone strongly. The crickets could be heard loudly in nearby trees and everyone was patient, helping families with children and those struggling with heavy bags. And water was offered to those in need in the heat with the words, we have enough, please take it. What a wonderful experience to see humanity at work, making the world a better place. After 14 hours, finally, we arrived at our hotel to find a wonderful cold platter of Italian delights had been put aside for us. Such kindness given from the heart. We ate with gusto, having forgotten our stomachs and pleased to be free at last from the enforced restrictions that traveling in a country at the very heart of Europe insists upon. For us, it was only a few hours. But for an entire population, it has been months and indeed years of such restrictions that other countries, including my own, can't even begin to understand or imagine. Forced to be muzzled in extreme temperatures and take medical procedures in order for the precious green pass, without which there's no school for children, there's no mixing with friends and families and loved ones, no going to work to earn soldi, and no going to the shops for food. Italy is not the land of online shopping with food deliveries and takeaways delivered to your home. The rule is comply or you don't eat. Such crimes on humanity will be held into account and that time is now. The week seemed to fly by in a haze of sunshine, sand and sea. For me personally, I felt like a child again swimming in the sea and jumping the waves with children and adults, all of us squealing in delight. The food, well, it's Italy, so of course it's an experience that I'll never be able to recommend enough. 
However, if you think that all-inclusive means munching all day around the pool with alcoholic drinks on tap, then you're going to be disappointed. Lunch is at 12.30 and dinner is at 7.30. But of course, the restaurants are open if you choose to eat at different times. If you want karaoke and all-day full English breakfast, then this is not for you. If you want a place to holiday with the Italians in all its authenticity, then you're going to be delighted. The Italians, similarly the Spanish, love their children and it's very much a place for families. Children are at the heart of the family and it's a humbling experience to see parents forgoing their cappuccinos in order for the children to have ice creams. It brings tears to your eyes to see grandchildren assisting their elders down the beach and walking arm in arm for the passeggiata along the seafront after the evening meal. I didn't encounter any Brits nearby, but menu signs and announcements are in English, which I didn't find before. But if you don't speak Italian, then don't worry. You've only got to point, smile and say grazie, and you'll find a warm welcome wherever you go. Now, the Italians are quite famous for a piccolo imbroglio here and there. For the most part, you can find a delicious croissant and a wonderful cappuccino for under four euros. When you consider that here in Britain, we can pay much more than that in the high street famous brand coffee shops, then it is real value for money. Their customer service is very good and they're eager to please. They don't expect tips, but we left them anyway as wages are low. For those in Italy who want to charge three euros for a small bottle of water, we didn't tip you and we didn't revisit the establishment. The fama di soldi is understandable though, after a period of being restricted. And of course, we tourists understand the high taxes you have to pay, even when you're closed for business. We understand you're trying to recuperate business and that you have a short time to do this, being seasonal and also with less tourists visiting. We're even prepared to pay a little more for the experience, but please remember that those that come and have a wonderful time will come again and again, and you'll benefit from this. So go easy on the tourists. To the tourists visiting, please remember to be polite to the locals. The laboratory work long hours in the heat under restrictive conditions in order for you to have your holiday. Wages are low and many of the workers are from other parts of Italy where there is no work. Some of them have not been able to go home for a long time, but they still smile, so please be kind. The beaches are cleaned every day and there is plenty of entertainment for families with music and dancing, sports on the beach, exercise classes and excursions. 90 euros will secure you an umbrella and two comfortable beach beds for a week. That's about £7 per person per day and very reasonable when you can pay £7 for a deck chair and a windbreak in Blackpool. The beds can be adjusted to whatever height suits you and they have a hood that you can pull over to keep your face out the sun. There are showers, toilets, refreshments and rubbish bins all in evidence and all cleaned throughout the day and every day. It was very noticeable that the bin men come round every single day to empty the bins, even on Sundays. Local councils here in Britain should take note, for there's much we can learn from other countries to improve our own services. Never did I see any rubbish on the beach, and for those that smoke, you even have an ashtray attached to your umbrella table complete with a lid, so no need for stubbing out in the sand. There are even low level taps for rinsing sand off your feet and air pumps for inflatables, taking the pressure off mums and dads blowing them up for kiddies. And the lifeguards make their presence known by paddling on gondolas in the water, ready to assist anyone that needs help. Local markets have a wonderful array of various goods with affordable beachwear, pretty clothes, great toys, and yes, you can barter and you'll hear all the market cat calls, hear all the banter and see theatrical demonstrations for various products. It brought a great smile, but at the same time made me nostalgic to think of the markets in Britain, which are now so badly in decline. Local councils, pull your finger out. The local produce is pricey by our supermarket prices, but then you pay for quality. 
Apples and peaches can be found at three euros per kilo, but they're huge and really juicy, as are the astonishing size of the watermelons. Wandering around the seafront in the evening, there are further little stalls selling handmade creative artisanal. And if you don't fancy walking, then there's electric bikes, scooters and wheeled pedalos for the entire family to ride together. The time just seemed to fly by and once again we were on the tarmac waiting to take off. But wait for it. Yep, more delays. Looking out the plane window, I could see uh, our luggage waiting to be loaded with no ground crew available to load it. A complete updated version of Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors. Of course, we missed our takeoff slot and had to wait. Apparently the skies over the UK are busy with everyone wanting to come to Britain. Hmm. Our flight was delayed by two hours and no surprises there at all. When every plane takes off, we have to remember that the path in the skies has to be clear all the way from start to finish. The precision that's needed for that, the communication, the organising and the stress levels of being an air traffic controller can be like no other job. You're responsible for the safety and well-being of so many people. Oh, wait a minute. There might be a job for you, a top job as it happens. Get your nominations in quick. There's only five other runners and uh, I wouldn't bet on any of them. To the wonderful people that I encountered on my travels, I want to thank you for the kindness, generosity and hospitality of the Italian people. Dico grazie mille per tutto e invio un baci a Italia. I found my strength in Italy in just one week and for that I'm so grateful and I count my blessings, I truly do. I hope that it won't be long before the next visit to the beautiful Mediterranean. Meanwhile, back in Blighty, I'm now refreshed and ready for the future. Bring it on and watch this space. The time has come. <laughs>